four years later, I'm revisiting this video thanks to very pertinent input from various people, some of which scientists, others not, and because it, as time passes, we learn more and we evolve and develop our opinion. I'll let some of the original images run, but they will not necessarily follow what I'm saying. If I go back to the beginning of this adventure, what started my experiment was the following sentence in the book Cat Sense from John Bradshaw. Extrapolating from this experiment, it seems likely that cats, unlike crows or apes, are mentally incapable of learning to use tools. And I thought, there's no way that's true. As a trainer, to me it was evident that cats could learn to choose the right string in the experiment described, the string that had the food. I just really focused on mentally incapable of learning, and I went on a quest to prove it wrong. Now, that's not exactly what the study says. It says, the results for the parallel setup showed that the cats were not able to choose a baited over a non-baited string. There was no evidence that cats understand the function of the strings or their physical causality. So the study does not say that cats can't learn this. It says that under the conditions in this study, the cats did not learn it. And then it concludes that it had not found evidence that cats understand physical causality. That's actually very okay as a conclusion. I shouldn't have a problem with that. <laughs> so as you're seeing, um, I was able to teach this to my cats. So it's not that they can't learn it at all, at least for the two parallel string setup. What I've gathered from uh, different people that have since uh, spoken with me is that the goal of these kinds of experiments is to determine if the animal understands that the string is linked to the food. So we're looking for the use of cognitive processes other than operant learning, so other than trial and error. We're looking to see if the animal understands that the string is attached to the food through some kind of reasoning or concept formation. We mean to exclude the possibility that choosing the string has been learned through repeated trials and that the animal now follows the path of the string because that has been successful before. So it's a tricky dis dis distinction and honestly, it's not one that I'm sure I can really easily test. I'm not even sure that there's a difference. I'll come back to this. So let's look at the way that the study was done, because I do still have issues with it. Number one, they taught the cats that if you pull the string, the food will be available. And number two, once the cats were successful at this, they moved on to a testing phase, and that now involved two parallel strings, only one of which had food attached to it. Do you see the problem here? Up to now, strings always mean food. No one told the cat, you now have to pay attention before you choose because the only one of the strings has food. So if I'm a cat, I'm thinking, oh, two strings, twice the food, cool, start pulling on any of them. When we go from a one string test to a two string test, we can not expect the cat to know that. If the cat is not either set up to look at the experiment as it approaches it, or trained to look and then released, it will likely assume that any string will lead to food because this is what we have taught them prior. And remember, their, their vision isn't very detailed in the first 25 centimeters in front of them. So this problem is added to all the other possible issues that I mentioned in my first video when designing this kind of experiment, the glare from lights, vertical or horizontal position of the acrylic panel, visual acuity, having surfaces that allow for easy pulling, colors, angle of approach, distance of approach, like antecedent arrangement is really important here to make sure that we're not accidentally setting the animal up to fail. I think they also tested at the time of day that's usually the midday cat nap and there was mention of restraint but we don't know what that looked like. All these factors could really influence um, the performance of the cats. So if we wanted to test understanding of the string being linked to the food, in my opinion, with my current knowledge, we would need to First, teach the cat to pull on the string to get the food, like, I, like they did. And then teach the cat to look before choosing, because only one of the two presented parallel strings now has the food, which is essentially what I did. Um, and then they learned and they were able to do it on their own. 
And once we've done these two steps, only then can we incorporate strings that are more confusing. And a crossed string test is not what I would go for because it's probably this, uh, something that's going to set the animal up to fail. Because it might look like two strings meeting at bends. So I would propose instead a wiggly mixed choice of string positions for the testing phase. Um, maybe that doesn't work for testing physical causality for reasons that I've not thought of yet, but it's my best offer for now. From my understanding of these experiments, the cat should get it right immediately if we mean to identify understanding of physical causality, because with every trial we had to the operant learning possibility. With my current level of knowledge and understanding, though, I'm honestly not sure I can discern where or how or if the operant and the other cognitive processes are separate. And I think, like, I've taken a course and I've read a book and I'm at the point where I think even the scientists in this field acknowledge that this is a new field of study relatively and that might not even be super clear to them. Um, I think that this field also has to work on making their research a bit more accessible to the general public, easier to understand. If I see that the food is there, and I learned that pulling on the string makes the food available, and now there are two parallel strings, and I can see that only one is in contact with the food, and if I try pulling the other, the food isn't available, um, but if I pull the one that's in contact with the food, the food is available. Now, th at this stage, the cat might have just learned to pull on the string that's on the same side uh, of the food when you have the two parallel strings set up, left versus right, um, and that's why we need to move to the more confusing string test. Um, and now that the strings are more confusing, if I learn through operant learning that what I need to do is to pay attention to where the string goes to follow the string from the food along its path to the acrylic panel and pull on that one, doesn't that mean I understand physical causality? Because isn't that physical causality? So I don't have the answer to that yet. And maybe I'll make another video in another four years. Um, so my question is, do we really need to have that instantaneous correct response instead of a shaped response? I'm not sure that we entirely do. I'm not sure we know what we're testing. So how is I need to track which string goes all the way to the food and choose that one different from the string is physically linked to the food and pulling on it pulls the food? And I don't have the answer. I'll have to keep thinking about it. Um, the main point of my first video remains the same. So we need to be really careful to not, not accidentally set animals up to fail when designing ex experiments. And if the animal fails, we need to look again. More complicated explanations for the cat's failure are not what we should be going for if something more simple can explain it. Okay, so this is shaping, pulling on the string, through clicker training, reinforcing successive approximations of the final behavior. So initially I had them go into a carrier so they couldn't see where I was putting the food and this is one of my first setups. You'll notice that now there's a, a piece of a placemat, a plastic placemat, so that they can pull easily. It's a soft surface, it's not like the carpet, but here he misses. And you can see here the lighting, the lighting reflects on the panel. But if I'm higher up, I don't see that. So I'm setting them up to fail and not realizing it actually. This is uh, trials at color changes to make it more evident. And the, the plank is so that their angle of approach is going to be higher so that they have a better way of seeing the treat. But honestly, getting distance was more important than getting this higher up perspective. Okay, so this is an Excel spreadsheet, and when I click Calculate Now, it just gives me A or B. And we're gonna say that we're gonna take uh, this one. I have this panel, so I'm trying to diminish the clever hands effect, so I can hide with my setup of left, right, left, right. And I've made, this is a dog crate, so I've pushed it over there so that I get a good distance when they go get the tiny kibble at the back. They have a good distance coming back so that they have 
a while to be able to see where the kibble is instead of just like coming up the table straight away and not thinking they're able to like from afar start seeing where the kibble might be so i think that has helped a lot um, I saw a presentation a while back by a researcher that was all about setting the animal up for success in experiments and adapting it to the species. So I, I will link to that presentation in the description of this video. And it makes me really enthusiastic to see that this is progressing. It's a really cool presentation. And I mean, the study is dating from 2008, so it's a long time ago by now. It's like 16 years. Uh, we've learned a lot just in the training field since then. So while I still think that this study set the cats up to fail, it has helped me to develop a better understanding of what science is and of the difficulties of testing things. I do still think that being a trainer with experience in antecedent arrangement is invaluable for scientists trying to test these kinds of things. And I look forward to learning more about cognition as this field develops. One scientist who gave me feedback said, I don't really think that any scientists living today would be surprised to hear that cats can learn to do this through operant learning. And I hope that's the case. And if it is, it's really encouraging to me. We acknowledge that cats can learn relatively complicated stuff given um, good enough successive approximations. Now, if we want to test for processes not involving operant learning, how do we reconcile not purposefully training with not setting the animal up to fail? And I think that's the important question we need to be asking when designing experiments. Because um, expecting someone to reason something too complicated for them isn't fair, especially if you can't first explain the context to them verbally because we don't share a common language. It might be true that cats do not understand physical causality. I did one quick session with Tuna um, a year ago, and this is a change in variable because I was using kibble before. We had not worked on this for ages, and after a quick refresher with the two pa parallel strings, Neither cat was able to choose the right string reliably when I remove well, when I moved on to the confusing setups. So it's really interesting to watch them watch the saucer without really paying attention to what they're pulling on. They know that the treat is right there, but they're not paying attention. So just like in the study, this little home experiment has not provided evidence that cats understand the function of the strings. Hopefully, someone else will eventually point out how crappy my setup is, and my design could have been better, and they will do a better one. Looking back, I would definitely train my cats to look from a stable position for a couple of seconds before releasing them. We constantly learn and hopefully make better experiments. For now, all I can say is that cats can learn to choose the right string through operant learning in a two parallel strings setup. And I'm pretty sure that they could learn to solve the confusing string setup as well through operant learning, although I can't prove it. I can't say anything about other potential cognitive processes, and I can't say anything about understanding of physical causality or tool use. But this it has been very interesting to work on, and we had a lot of fun. I think my cats had a lot of fun. I hope so too. Thank you for uh, listening, and uh, do take this on and prove me wrong or design a better setup.